Okay. Uh, this is Melissa. This no is makeup, and I look really old today. Yeah, I look, yeah, I look, look a lot different. You look very good. Okay. You look very good. And I I'm know. 50, so. Yeah, you, you're looking very beautiful. Believe it or not, uh, there are people that are very good to me, too. But the amount of people that make it uncomfortable are just overwhelming. Okay, so uh, my name is Kobia. I'm a TikToker. Uh, I mostly approach people, those who are in the street. The reason why they end up in the street mm -hmm. and i think they have a story behind I the do. reason why so can you tell me the reason why you end up in the street um i had a whole bunch of surgeries i was at mount sinai hospital oh. and um i wound up spending like seven months out of a year in the hospital which in and of itself made it feel like jail the doctors were initially treating my pain and helping me out and they stopped because they thought I was just an opiate addict or, or that, you know, like that's all that was happening. So they stopped prescribing me opiates um, and discharged me to a setting that I wound up in a drop-in center um, and have been ambushed by men repetitively in drop-in centers, in shelters, um, I've been raped um, because my family members were trying to teach me a lesson and weren't supportive. Oh, okay. Um, I, you know, I, I actually was receiving benefits and had the, my card stolen, went to social services and was told that I had to go all the way back to Long Island with no money. And all they had to do was issue me a new card. Oh. So now my benefits are inactive. I had food stamps. I had SSI, and it all because I didn't have the card and couldn't make it back to Long Island and was on the street. Nobody helped me. I refused to go back to the hospital because every time I did, every I, no matter what I told them, they did all they wanted to do was give me something that wasn't an opiate, even though I've had so much surgery. Oh. Oh. that I had tubes coming out of me for months oh, so now I'm on the street and people are trying to get me to go back into a shelter where it's just as bad I can't even go into McDonald's to pee because when you go into McDonald's they make you pay for something to use a restroom as they're paying a security guard to sit in front of it and make sure you don't get in it wow that is very bad so, and then everybody watches me pay, doesn't give me money. I have people when they know I get stuff, other people just try and take it from me. I've had shit stolen right off my body. And I plan to do this until October. My initial plan was to take my experience to Congress. Okay. I'm somebody that's educated. I'm from Long Island. I've been in school my entire life. I'm actually very bright. I was taking my experience and going to try and make my community better. And the way that people treat me and and don't give me shit because of how they think I might spend it or what might happen makes me sick at this point. I don't even know if I want to do it anymore. That's very bad. That's a very sad story. Yeah. So since you don't want to go back to, uh, you don't want to go back to the hospital, how are you going to uh, handle this situation? I'm, I'm not positive yet. I, I think I'm going to leave New York. Because um, in the street, I, I'm not sure your problem is going to solve. So unless maybe you have somebody, like a family, you got a family around? Not one that I can depend on. Uh, I think it's going to be sad. It so is sad. if your family are watching, what do you, why are you telling them? Can you look through the camera and tell them maybe you have something to talk I'm sorry that you couldn't support me because, I, that, you know, I did my best to support them, and all they cared about was money. Then while I was in the hospital, I literally had to like bribe my sister to come, and every time she came, she fought with me. Well, I had tubes coming out of me, and she was telling the doctors there that I was just an addict looking for pain meds and shit like that. It, it's pretty disgusting that I have a family member that would do so that. So how long have you been in the street? Um, about a year now because I was oh, at Bronxwood and they discharged me because other women would see me dancing in either a hallway or outside and were complaining about it. I would ask for different roommates because I'm autistic and I have a history and they refused to switch my room and then they just treated me 
and they treated me to a shelter where all of my belongings, including my teeth, wow. were taken. That's how everything started. And um, you are uh, you are always located in this place, or you do? You no, I know different places that I can go to the bathroom, but I can't even sit on a corner because as I was doing this, I was going into Times Square and like helping promoters and stuff like that, and helping different things, and nobody gives me money. So now I'm not going to so help them. How do you ask money from people? You ask I won't them. go up to people and ask for money. I'm not going to sit here and beg. So since you can't go to McDonald's, you can't get your yourself food, how do you eat? Out of the garbage, or sometimes people give me stuff. And you stay here till a day break? Yeah. I try and stay up all night so I'm safer. I have weapons that I can protect myself with. I know, I'm, and I have areas where there are certain people that I trust. But for the most part, being on the street is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And the people that walk by and act like they don't give a shit are making me so sick. I, I, I just, I don't know what to do anymore. Have you met somebody you know before? On the, on the I've had people actually that I've gone back to their apartment. And I woke up, and the dog was up against my leg, and it was jerking off. Wow. So you can't trust anybody. Oh. And then men get mad because I won't talk to them. You know? So your story is very sad, and I think a lot of But I'll be there. fine. I just think I have to leave New York. Sure. sure. Yeah. So you need to get us at a shelter because that will help And you. yeah, shelters don't help in the way that you think they do. Because so, even in the um, shelter... Mm -hmm. Even in a drop-in shelter, I got 40 guys around me. Oh, okay. And people like that are just putting their hands, and I go to sleep putting their hands in my bag. And doing shit like that. Or yeah. And I'm somebody that, like, if I walk past a family, I'll give them whatever money I have on sure. me. Sure. So, um, I was walking around giving people clothes and shit that I found. Mm -hmm. Fine. because I have pattern recognition, and it's really easy for me to see things. Mm -hmm. And they still took from me. They even, this week, took my deodorant. Wow. You know, it's stupid. I've had makeup taken. I've had men literally rape me. Over here? No, down by Hillside. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, when you came to New York, is better over here or over there? When you compare I think those... in the more affluent areas, mm -hmm. it's a lot better it's because lot better. people are kinder to one another. Sure. And I'm somebody that's kind, so they don't give me a hard time. But coming to areas like this where people just walk over they you. They don't care about you. They don't give a they shit. They don't give you attention. Or they just stare. Yes, I sir. literally have men that follow me around waiting for me to try and piss. You know, and, and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And it doesn't matter what I have on my body, what makeup I have on. I'm a female. Sure. I'm carrying around 200 pounds because this is... A, it's very huge. It's very heavy. Yeah, yeah but... I'm a very strong person, and I will be okay no matter what, but I'm so sick of the people in New York that I don't know what to do anymore, because I was trying to change it, sure. and I don't know if I want to bother. All right, so um, I think your story is very Thank you. sad yeah. one. Awful but I will be okay no matter what. Sure, sure. I can uh, walk out of New York. You Are you a Christian? You believe in Jesus Christ? <laughs> I believe in um, something bigger than myself. I'm more oh. of an omnist, oh, okay. where I would take the good out of each religion, not just stick with sure, one. Sure, sure. Because I think the, dis the distinguishing factors in religion are minuscule, and people fight over them. Sure. When if it's just that you believe in a higher power and something bigger than yourself, yeah. and giving to your community and making it a better place, then that's God. That's the God that you should feel inside sure, you. Sure. Thank you very much. Your name again? Melissa. Melissa, my name is Thompson. Let me, nice let me, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a picture. Uh, okay. This is Melissa. This no is makeup, and I look really old today. Yeah, I look, yeah, I look, look a lot different. Like you look very good. Thank you. You look very good, and I know. I'm 50, so. Yeah, you, you looking very beautiful. Believe it or not, there are people that are very good to me too, but the amount of people that make it uncomfortable are just overwhelming. Okay. So Melissa, I'm leaving here. I'm going back to my house and I think maybe I'll meet 